first reading here in 17 years. It was wow. a pleasure to be back in the state. I want to thank Joel, Beyond Baroque, Gloria for this opportunity, and I hope you enjoy the works I have to present to you today, both my own and uh, one by Susanna Rich, who Joel mentioned earlier. So, Rabbit Ears is the first uh, book anthology about television, and um, we might as well begin with the beginning of television, which is what my poem is about. Now, many of you may remember that um, television was first aired publicly at the World's Fair of 1939-1940. Not that you lived then, but you may remember it from your history books. But actually, the story of television is more complicated than that. There were many participants in the development of it. And uh, what I want to do in my poem was give a Edward R. Murrow, you are there approach to the beginning of television, bringing you back in time to an important scientific discovery that led to the development of electronic television, discovery of which we, none of us would be here, and this anthology would not be here either. So we owe some thanks to a young man who was a farm boy from uh, Idaho named Philo T. Farnsworth. This is his story. Conceiving television at age 14, atop a plow in Rigby, Idaho. <coughs> Steam pervades, potato to potato. Philo looks high and low at parallel lines, row by row, but this alone is not the scene he's pondering at age 14. No, he rubs some dirt, the soil moist, pats his forehead sweat away. Not much choice today, this scene in Idaho at age 14, a time with swimming holes and having fun this humid summer of 21, yet here he is with horse and plow, his mind getting all fanciful again. He dreams of pictures that fly through the air, but how? The stack of magazines in attic loft, the summer board and scene seen setting in. And row by row by row it goes throughout the afternoon. Boy knows the spinning discs of machines, trying to break images to electricity, but that takes speed they simply do not have. He taps his forehead, think, think. A drink of lemonade would be quite keen right now, the blade of plow at rest atop the soil. Like many teens with magazines, he dreams with quiet passion. Magnets and electrons light into electric, back to light. This might work with a cathode ray. Yes, any teen who spends time with electric magazines in Attic Gloss in Idaho in 1921 would know about a cathode ray. But here today, in steamy heat, a wisp of hair has dropped across his brow. A sweep of hand from forehead, top to back, edge of right thumb at rest atop his ear. It's clear that speed and image size are key. You see, the image is a block. You have to break it down to microscopic size. He yawns, his teen eyes close, he sighs, his eyes reopen, sighs. How do you break the picture block to manageable size? He eyes the plowing of the afternoon potato field, Idaho, I just don't know. He shakes his head and looks down at the hard work, the keen work, the neat work he has done. It'll come. The sun still lingers in the sky. And when it sets, all fireflies and stars, and no more toil. I do good work, a smile. Look at those lines of soil. A perfect line atop a perfect line, row by row by row. I know. <laughs> oh.